these are just some of the plays that highlight some of the struggles that this U.S. women's national team had in the attack. The lack of ideas, the lack of creativity, and making those the, the smart decisions in the attacking third to play to the strengths of the players that they're, they're playing alongside. And Alex Morgan, at this age of 34, she needs to play in behind. That's her strength. It's not checking. It's not coming back and, and, and finding a pass. It's playing off the shoulders of the center backs. And if she's not doing that, you could see that she, she didn't have that effect that we typically see Alex Morgan have mm -hmm. in past World Cups playing with this U.S. Women's National Team. So mm -hmm. the dynamic of that trio with Trini Rodman, Sophia Smith, and Alex Morgan did not work because they were all making similar runs mm -hmm. and you didn't have enough to pull center backs or those outside backs out of position so you had those numerical advantages either in the wide areas or, or down the middle. Do you think it was a mistake to make her co-captain in hindsight? No. She, she has over 200 caps. It's mm -hmm. Alex Morgan. If you take her, then there's no reason why she shouldn't be a co-captain. Right. If she's playing, absolutely. Right. The you issue was that she was playing more than you would have. If, if Charlie Alinovsky, what a horrific, <laughs> <laughs> horrific yeah. what's, what, visual. What, what would have been your 11 yesterday? Vlako Davies. Oh, um, yeah. Vlako Davies, yeah. No. What would have been your 11 not the, yesterday yeah. already? Well, yeah, yesterday. Sophia Smith, she didn't have a great tournament. She started off with two goals against Vietnam, but that was a, a country that's getting their first opportunity in a World Cup, mm -hmm. largely inexperienced, mm -hmm. and they didn't have the quality. But... Given that, Sophia Smith offers you so much more as a, as a center forward. If she's playing in that position, because she checks deep and plays that link up, and she has the ability to get in behind, and I love her change of pace. She, she dribbles at players, which also creates more of those mismatches and gives more space for Trini Rabin or Lynn Williams or Alyssa, Alyssa Thompson. Thompson. But we never got to see those players because Vlaco did not give them an opportunity. Forget the experimenting before the World Cup mm -hmm. to, to try different trios, maybe to play with two up top. We never got to see that given that you, you could play maybe a Sophia Smith with Alex Morgan or Sophia Smith with a Trini Robin. What a dynamic duo that could be. Yeah. We didn't see that. And then even in the group stage, I expected rotations, which you see from every other country. Japan had been flip-flopping. Mm -hmm. They're, they're uh, attacking players throughout the World Cup. They, Vlako did not do it enough. He didn't even do it. And then when he made substitutions, it was far too late. Well, so that, that's I mean, a reason why you didn't see that chemistry where this team could be thriving in the attacking third. Why do you think there was such hesitancy to really deviate from this same starting 11, I mean, aside from the two changes we saw, you know, before this game, but, but just in general, obviously this has been a criticism throughout the tournament. Mm -hmm. Why do you think the hesitancy was there? Uh, I, for me, the ratio of, la you know, being stubborn versus not, not, not knowing what else to do. Mm -hmm. uh, to me, at the beginning of the competition, it was very different to how I feel today. And he took, an, he, he took already from the beginning, he took an unbalanced squad to the World Cup. Mm -hmm. It makes, still makes no sense to me. We, talk, we talked a little bit about Julia. It just still makes no sense to me why we didn't even see her play in the oh, six. Oh, Ashley Sanchez. Ashley Sanchez, the fact that we she goes home and doesn't World need to clean Cup. her boots is ridiculous to me. How we lacked dynamism when, uh, until Rose Lavelle was healthy enough to start, and the moment she played, we showed that dynamism up top. As soon as she's out with yellow card accumulation, which I think is a ridiculous rule, that it stays once you get to the knockout stages, but whatever, once she's out for a game, the fact that Ashley Sanchez doesn't even come in as a sub is absolutely ridiculous to me. So why, what is it? For me, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna say it. He doesn't, have, he doesn't have the creativity. It's not stubbornness, it's the lack of creativity. He did not know what else to do. That's the only assumption I can come up with. And, and you just you talked about unbalance. It's not only the roster selections, it's the way the team set up and the style mm -hmm. of play. If you have three wingers, three mm -hmm. forwards that are just north-south a, a lot for the most part, Sophia Smith can come inside, but are bombing to, to make runs in behind. Mm -hmm. All three do yeah, the wingers. same runs, okay? Then your midfield, you play with two that do the same thing. Rose Lavelle when she is healthy mm -hmm. and Lindsey Horan, who can, who can play as a 10, but mm -hmm. they're bombing forward, and you leave one Andy Sullivan who doesn't have the pace to do it by herself. Mm -hmm. And it's not till a knockout round game, because Rose Lavelle's suspended, that 
you go with double pivot sixes and mm -hmm. you realize, oh, we got the midfield back. Mm -hmm. Oh, we have protection across the back four. Mm -hmm. You didn't think of that until the knockout round to try that. And Emily Sada, as great as she was, she was Incredible. phenomenal in that yes, guess. That's not the best option that you have if you had time, given that this is the formation we're going to run with, to make sure that this will help our front three the most, given that that's supposed to be the strength of this U.S. women's national team mm -hmm. with the pace and strength and goal-scoring prowess that they have. These women are phenomenal as individuals, mm -hmm. but as a team, they were not set up well to get the most out of this group. And so, that comes from the leadership and the coaching. I, I, know, the 11, I know the 11 you would have fielded. It's, uh, it's Alyssa and Air. The, sa the same back line, you would have done double. Oh no, you would put Alana Cook in the center as a center back, move Julie Ertz alongside, um, alongside Andy Sullivan, Lindsay Horan at the 10, Trinity Rodman at that 9, Sophia Smith, and Lynn Williams out wide. You like, you, you like that? I, uh, do, I do like that. You like that 11? Lynn I like that better than in. what I saw. Lynn Williams came in and was phenomenal was. at changing the game and just. Just being so decisive, mm -hmm. right? It, it's not about, hey, can I, you know, do X, Y, Z good and, and do these step overs? Just be decisive yeah. and be very good at that one thing that you do. And that's what Lynn Williams is. She can beat anyone down the line mm -hmm. and she'll do it, do it, do it. There's no, there's no hesitation. And that is what really hurt uh, Anderson, the, the left back for, for Sweden, who also mm -hmm. plays for my former club, Hammarby, for the women's side. Um, but I, it's, just, it's just painful to see that the U.S. women's national team crash out given how much talent they have on that roster. It's not that, man, they, they were, just weren't good enough. No, we had the players they, on the bench to win. They had the players, yeah. We had the players on the bench to win. Which makes you think that maybe if you're going to look at this, I'm a positive person. Uh, glass half full, that the pieces are there. No, the glass, there. It's glass just is broken. a question of how to. Glass is broken. Everything's how they, spilled. How they all fit in with one another. And there's a little bit of time to figure mm -hmm. that out. Um,